Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be giving you romance recommendations that have rivaling families in them. Sorry if you hear any yard work outside, my dad has the weed eater out and there is nothing I can do. <laughs> so yeah, so this trope is very forbidden, but I love this trope, okay? Um, the rivaling families trope. Think Romeo and Juliet. You have the Montagues and the Capulets. You have Romeo and Juliet and they are falling in love even though it's very forbidden because these families hate each other. So I'm gonna give you 10 recommendations, technically 11, but one is like a series, you know, with an amazing rivaling families trope. So the Brutal Birthright series by Sophie Lark, a few of these actually have the rivaling families trope, which I feel like some, like it's a very, apparent thing in the mafia world i want to say um because the mafia families like are always at war with each other so the first one is obviously brutal prince the first book in this series you have ada and callum i believe callum's from the irish mafia and ada's from the italian mafia and they hate each other their families just hate each other until one day ada and her brothers end up crashing one of callum's sister's birthday parties and she ends up accidentally like setting fire to his house and he's very bad and so the families don't want to cause like a, a war between the two so they force callum and ada to get married so this is a marriage an arranged marriage forced marriage situation but this was so good because at the beginning of their marriage the majority of like the beginning of their marriage they hate each other they even try to kill each other at points <laughs> so forewarning you but this one is just so good i feel like this book is just amazing too in the fact that the beginning these families are big rivals and towards the end like they are a huge entire one unit family like they are brought together because these two are married i just love this one and it is so good next is stolen air book two in the series we have the polish mafia rivals with the irish mafia i think anyway the same family is Callum. I don't know specifics, but basically the Polish mafia versus one of the other mafia people from this book, one of these families. Nico in here is kind of like the boss of the Polish mafia. And he's very upset with Callum's family here in this book. And so he decides to retaliate by kidnapping one of the daughters in said family named Nessa. And so it's a kidnapping romance. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And so yeah, Nessa ends up falling for her captor. Um, even though there's a lot of hatred and a lot of animosity between the Polish mafia and her family, but she can't help but fall in love with Miko. Like I want to read this book all over again right now because of how amazing their romance is. Miko and Nessa are everything. I love a good captor captive romance and this one just did it phenomenally well. Then Heavy Crown, the last book in the series, also has the rivaling families trope. We have the Russian mafia versus the Irish mafia, I'm pretty sure. Russian and Irish. Yelena and Sebastian are two characters here. Yelena is the daughter to a Brachva boss and Sebastian is in the other books in this series. Um, and the two of them end up falling for each other even though Yelena's dad is no good, like he is a bad evil. And I feel like this book out of all of them have the most rival familiness. But all these books are so good. Like the Bruno Birthright series, amazing, top tier. Hate to Want You by Alicia Rye is definitely an underrated one. More people need to read this freaking series. It's just so good. Livy and Nicholas are from rivaling families. I'm pretty sure it's because they're both in a small town and um, their families own companies that rival each other's. Whenever they were, I think like teens or early 20s, they ended up hooking up for just like one night on her birthday. Like they could not stay away from each other. And then one year on the one night that they're always gonna do their hookup business, um, Livy does not show up and Nicholas is like, why not? Where are you? Where is this woman? Since she missed that one day, he's he, he realizes like, oh, I actually care about this woman. I actually want to be with her. Um, and then he realizes that Livy has actually moved back to their small town. Um, and the two of them have to come to terms with everything that's happened um, since she left town and since their last time they got together um, and honestly come to terms with their rivaling families and how much their families hate each other and how much their families would disapprove of them being together. But this is just so good. It's an amazing forbidden romance for sure. Then I have The Sea Witch by Katie Robert. This is book number five, a part of her Wicked Villain series. So this is her uh, Little Mermaid retelling. Um, so you have Ursa, Ariel, Ariel, and Eric, um, or whoever's the Sea Witch, Ariel, and Eric. They all have different names in this series sometimes. <laughs> so the three of them, this is their relationship. So it's an M, it's an F, F, M, M, F, F. I don't know. I don't know where the letters go sometimes. 
<laughs> um, anyway, it's a three. It's like a romance between all three of them. Ursula tricks Ariel to go to this auction to auction herself off because she wants to buy her to get back at her father because she hates her dad and her entire family. So she's gonna take Ariel and show um, her dad how much she hates him by doing so. Um, but then she ends up falling in love with the woman she bought. Like it, she hates her dad, but she's gonna love his kid. So there's a little bit of an age gap in here. And it's very interesting, this rivaling family's aspect because Ursula and her family rival Ariel's family but Ariel's kind of like of a younger generation than Ursula. So yeah, I enjoyed this one and I just love all the Wicked Villain series books. If you've never read them yet, please do. Next is Meet by Candy Steiner. This is the second book in the Becker Brothers series. And this is also a small town romance series. Logan and Mallory's families have been at war with each other for quite a long time in this small town. I'm pretty sure it's because they own like rivaling whiskey companies in this town, I'm pretty sure. Mallory has to come back into town because her dream in life is to open up an art studio and the only way she can get money for it is by taking her dad's offer of working for his company, even though she does not want to do that. Um, and so she has to be in close proximity with Logan, her arch enemy, or her family's arch enemy, um, and they end up falling in love, obviously, and they're having to keep it a secret because of their families and everything. So there's a great forbiddenness to this book. Another one that I mentioned in my small town romance video is Bitter Rivals by Jay Sterling. We kind of have the same situation as Neat. We have two rivaling families, but they own winery businesses instead in this small town. And so the two main characters, one from each family, end up falling in love, even though they know that they're not supposed to, you know? So that one's very similar to that one. Um, but if you want more of a winery instead of whiskey, <laughs> check out this one, I guess. I know I keep mentioning this book in like all of my recommendation videos, but it fits so many things, okay? This is A Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker. And the rivaling families aspect in here is so interesting. Okay, so Romeria is a woman from our land and she ends up getting roped into this woman's life and she ends up actually transporting Romeria into a fantasy world. And so Romeria ends up getting put into the body of her doppelganger in this fantasy land. There's a Romeria living in this fantasy land. She ends up getting put into her body and nobody knows that this is a different Romeria, you know? Um, and the Romeria tries to figure out what is this fantasy land all about and who is this King Xander trying to kill her? Um, because apparently the, the previous Romeria betrayed him for some reason. The rivaling families aspect in here is interesting because Romeria doesn't know what's going on between the two families. So Romeria, well, her body, her previous, the previous Romeria is part of this um, royalty uh, in this fantasy land and King Xander is from a different royalty family in this fantasy land, okay? Two different areas of land that they're both ruling. His family hates her family, they're rivaling and so they were gonna get married to kind of like bridge the gap between the two but the previous Romeria betrayed him so he's like mega pissed. Um, and then you learn about why these two are rivals. It is so good. Another fantasy romance that I have for you is Between Dawn and Dusk by Jamie Schlosser. This is actually a novella, a part of the series. Um, the first book is The Fae King's Curse, which I loved. I read this one after that, but I bet you could read it before. Um, it doesn't really matter. Basically the hero from this book, this is the story of how his parents fell in love. His parents' names are Zella and Kirth, and this is their romance story. They are fated mates. Um, so they're both from rivaling families in this fantasy land and they end up meeting one day and the mating bond kind of like snaps into place immediately when they see each other. And she goes, Zella goes to tell her father, like, I found my mate, it's Kirith. I know you don't like his family, but like, he's my mate. Like, I'm gonna be with him forever. And her father is pissed. He's like, no, you're not. You're never gonna get with someone from that family. No, he locks her up in a tower and plans to keep her there basically for the rest of her life because he does not want her to get with Kirith. Uh, but then Kirth comes to save her from the tower and to take her with him to his realm. And oh my gosh, it is so good. I love this novella. This is such a good fantasy romance for how short it is. And I feel like it sets up the main series really, really, really well. The last two books are my historical romance recommendations. So first is obviously Never Seduce the Sky by Maya Banks. Oh my gosh, this one is just so good. It's one of my favorite romances of all time, if you didn't know. Our two main characters in here are Evelyn and Graham. They're from rivaling families in this Scottish land. Um, but then the king wants these two families to stop fighting. And so he's like, you know what? I'm gonna force these 
two to get married. And so he basically puts out a decree that they have to get married and both families are not happy about this. A few years ago, Evelyn actually fell off of a horse and ended up losing her hearing, but nobody knows that because she was on the said horse to escape her family from putting her in an arranged marriage with a horrible man. And so everyone thinks that she just has brain damage um, from this fall and can't understand anybody when in actuality she's just keeping quiet and choosing not to speak to anybody because she doesn't want them to know that she's okay to marry this man if that makes sense like she's protecting herself she doesn't want to marry a guy who will hurt her so she's keeping her mouth shut and making people believe what they want to believe but no one knows she's actually deaf and just can't hear them but she can read lips anyway and graham doesn't want to marry Evelyn because he has heard the rumors that she's been injured and he might not be able to have kids with her because he never wants to force himself on a woman that doesn't know what's going on you know um he wants to be respectful to any woman that he's with but then the two of them meet and everything changes Evelyn is smitten with graham because he has such a low baritone voice that she can slightly like hear something for the first time in so long she becomes so excited basically infatuated with graham and doesn't want to leave his side because she could finally hear something and so graham takes her back to his land and gets married and everything but then he realizes like oh she's deaf she just can't hear me like i'm going to help you in this situation so we can be together like i'm so excited about this and so the two of them start to fall in love even though they've been told their whole lives to hate the other person in said family please read this if you have not yet it is so so and the last book in this video is Nobody's Duke by Scarlet Scott. Ara and Clayton are our two characters in here from rivaling families and they're actually kind of like next door neighbors too. When they are in their late teens, early 20s, they end up meeting each other for the first time in the woods and that slowly starts up a friendship and then a romance between the two. But then on the night that they're gonna go run away and get married together, the two of them think that the other person had betrayed them and didn't show up to their meeting spots. Years later, Ara has been married had a child and become a widow already. Her husband was murdered. So the same people who murdered him are out to murder her. And so the police in this situation have have asked Clayton to come basically watch over her and be her bodyguard. But they don't know that they have a history. And um, the two of them are forced to be together in close proximity with each other while also trying to come to terms with what happened all those years ago and like why they didn't show up for their wedding. When in actuality there might've been, but there might've been outside forces going on that they might not have known about, um, like their families interfering and them not knowing about it. Um, but yeah, I just adore this romance. This is basically like, again, the magic, except it's a rivaling family's romance instead of, and again, the magic, he's just the lowly stable boy, you know? So if you love again, the magic, please check out Nobody's Duke or just check it out in general. This is a great rivaling family's historical romance. But anyways, they have those are some rivaling families romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to or if you have any recommendations for me and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me any yellow related emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways thank y'all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all! Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.